What's going on, Mother Truckers? Welcome to Mother Trucker News. Email us at mothertruckernews at gmail.com. Definitely have to get into this right here because the CEO of UPS uh, just announced that they're so excited that at the end of a five-year contract, drivers will average a salary of $170,000, including pay and benefits. That's up from the average of $145,000. Now, you know, you hear this and everybody's going buck wild for this. And so when it comes down to it, what does this really sound like? You know, uh, Kara Tome, the CEO of UPS, they made it sound like every driver is kind of going to make this $170,000. But as you hear... It's at the end of the five-year contract. So let's break this down and give you a little bit more information because it is a little bit misleading, right? Uh, Skylar has a great video on this. I'll put it a little bit snippet of this where he actually says the breakdown for the delivery drivers. You know, I know we like to talk about the truck drivers, so we want to give you that information as well because your first thought is, you know, a feeder driver or a truck driver's got to make more than a delivery driver, right? And actually... They're kind of getting paid the same because the top rate is the top rate. The difference is, you know, uh, they get paid per mileage as well. So let me give you some of this information here. Now that UPS drivers are making $170,000 a year, are you thinking of switching careers? How's that possible $170,000 a year feeling? This is going to take longer than a minute to explain. So let's go about this the right way. Now, $170,000 a year is a bit of an exaggeration here, but let me break it down for you. Now, I don't know about you, but I love factual information, so I'm going to do my best to just be transparent about the wages that we make. Under current contract, our wage is $41.51 an hour. Now, this contract that has been seen all over social media, once that contract ratifies, which is in the voting process right now, we'll be making $44.26 an hour. Now, if you do some quick math here, if you were to take 4426 an hour times 2080 hours, which is 40 hours a week, that comes out to about $92,000 a year. But that's not including overtime, and it's also not the important part that we're missing here. See, one of the other things that a lot of people don't take in consideration is our medical insurance and our pension. Now, our pension, don't quote me, but it's roughly somewhere between $11 and $13 per hour that's paid into our pension at the 2080 hours, which comes out roughly about $25,000 a year. Now, you can figure the medical insurance at whatever you want, but you can quickly see that it would actually take about a hundred seventy thousand dollar a year job to replace this one for me. Now, well, you know, I talked to a driver and we kept it anonymous, but I asked the question, quick question. They saying that box drivers will make one hundred seventy thousand a year. Uh, our feeder drivers getting paid more, and he writes this. He says it's a hundred seventy a year when they include all benefits. Right. So remember that with all benefits, you know, he says that's including the pension, 401k, employee stock program, dental vision, full health care for the family at no extra cost. Dang, that's pretty dang good. Right. Um, he says it's a little complicated. Our mileage pay routes pay significantly more. So in general, any route over 500 miles, some areas, 600, I believe, pay mileage, not hourly. They are over a dollar a mile. So, for instance, we have many 600 ish mile runs. So. Hey, that's here. Uh, good to hear that, you know. So he says, high seniority drivers, I say, make 160 plus. Sleeper team drivers can easily make well over that. Day cab mileage general make a bit less than sleeper mileage, you know. Um, so he says, feeder drivers make about the same hourly as package car drivers, but depending on where they work, feeder drivers have more opportunity to get into mileage paid routes that often can make more than package. So remember, feeder driver is a truck driver and a package driver is the delivery drivers that you see in the box trucks, right? So he says where he works, starting drivers really only make about 50, 65K, you know? So at the end of it, he says, but once you hit your fifth year, most drivers here will gross over six figures, not including benefits, right? He gives a breakdown here. I'll give you guys the breakdown uh, for singles, doubles, and triples. And for the actual pay, uh, it says here, uh, 12 months, $23, 24 months, $24, 36 months, $25, 48 months, $30.75. And then the new top rate after 48 months, you know, it's looking like it's what, uh, $44.25 if the contract passes. So I'll put that information down below for you guys. You know, one thing to consider as well is that 
You know, a lot of these drivers, they gotta, they don't just get hired on full time right away. They got to be a part timer for a very long time. And that's why UPS uh, as a whole is fighting for them. Right. And so when you hear, man, you just got to put it in five years or you're going to jump right in and you're going to get 170K a year. That's really not how it's going to happen uh, or a part timer for a while. It could be one year, two years, some places. He says his place was one year to get in full time. But other places could take three to six to eight years, right? And so you got to calculate that time. So you got to be a part timer unloading packages and whatnot, and loading the trucks, and and you got to do that for imagine five six years, and then after that, then you start your first full year, and then after your forty eight months, you finally make that big money. So this could take up to ten years plus to make that kind of money. So you know, just understand that as well. You know, uh, for people that are wondering about the tentative agreement, uh, Sean O'Brien actually had a webinar on this. I'll put this video out there so that you guys can see this, so that you can see the information that they're putting out for all drivers. You know, what are your thoughts at the end of the day? Do you think that this is a good deal? Yes or no? And just want to break it down a little bit more so that you guys understand that it's not just 170 k right off the bat. Good evening. Thank you for getting on the call. I'm Sean O'Brien, General President of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. More than 30,000 members are joining this call tonight. First and foremost, thank you and congratulations. As announced six days ago on July 25th, we've reached a tentative agreement with UPS. This is a historic landmark deal. This is the most lucrative contract in labor history. We demanded strong contracts than we've ever had at UPS, and we got it. $30 billion in a tentative agreement, which changes the game for 340,000 of our members, but more importantly, sets the tone for the entire labor movement. We got more money, higher wages than ever before, huge non-economic gains we will highlight. We will talk about what comes next. We'll talk about what happened today. Other representatives on the webinar as well will tell you about what's next and what their perspectives are. So where do we last leave off? We held a webinar on July 16th. In days after, our credible strike threat forced UPS back to the table. This fight began on August 1st, 2022. For one year, our unity and organization shaped this campaign nationwide. We kept the pressure on UPS from day one. We would not have the tentative agreement without you. The locals rallied. Tens of thousands of our members practiced picketed. We shared information. We engaged with the public and our communities. We reminded everyone how hard our members work and how rich UPS is. In the end, we got them to move in big ways. When UPS walked away from the table on July 5th, they told us they had nothing more to give. They presented a proposal that would have left tens of thousands of part-timers with no new wages. When UPS came crawling back on July 25th, they were ready to pay up. So what happened on July 25th? In the morning, UPS presented and showed big progress in a proposal to us across the table. But we said it wasn't enough, and we made sure that they knew it wasn't enough. We knew there was more juice to squeeze out of that orange at UPS. UPS put more money on the table for part-timers. They structured the pay same as full-timers with the general wage increase, which they did not do back on July 5th. After reviewing with the committee, we went back to UPS for several hours on July 25th. We demanded more, we pushed them into a corner, and we got the best possible deal we knew UPS could put on the table. We have spent months as a committee at the table, reviewing UPS's finances, debating proposals from the company, adjusting our own to get the most out of UPS. In the end, it came down to getting as much money for full-timers and part-timers as we could up front. We got $30 billion in new money on the table. Last contract was a $13 billion deal with many concessions not favorable for our members. So that's more than double what the union got in 2018. It was about scaring UPS into submission. UPS family ran out of time. This is why they came back July 25th and made such progress and movement. UPS was in a position to play its entire hand or risk losing even more customers and potentially putting them on strike. They risked initiating the biggest strike in their history. And UPS did not want to do that, so they paid up in a big way. The tentative agreement will make drivers the highest paid. This will be the richest deal for part-timers in 40 years at UPS. Everyone will get at least $750 more per hour of the life of the agreement, and some will get more. Long-time part-timers will get even more with longevity raises. Immediate wages upon ratification are $2.75 more per hour. This is for everyone. A few quick examples of these wage increases in year one. $2.75 is 
designed to ensure everyone rises to or above $21 an hour right away in the part-time ranks. If you currently make $21, you will rise to $23.75. If you make more under an existing MRA, you still get the general wage increase incorporated into your MRA. We have more than 40,000 part-timers making $16.65 or less per hour. All these members will immediately come up to $21 per hour. That means at least a first year raise of $4.35 per hour. The goal here was to ensure existing workers are rewarded. Right now on UPS Teams throughout detailed wage rate examples are available to all members. Go to the app and review these documents. You can also review the entire tentative agreement. The full agreement was put on the app as soon as it was reviewed by the Teamsters legal team on July 25th. Additional examples of wage increase have been added to the app in just the last few days. This week on Wednesday, make sure you visit the app to use our new wage increase calculator. This new tool will allow you to plug in your current position in wage rates to see how much money you'll make. Keep an eye out for this. A hallmark of this whole campaign has been transparency. We've engaged full membership every step of the way. Daily updates from the bargaining table, photos and videos from negotiations, and in the field details on proposals and responses from the company. We want you to review the full tentative agreement, considered more than 60 changes and improvements to this agreement. Huge non-economic and economic gains for all. Despite these huge wins that will benefit us all, we need to also be honest and upfront about our whole campaign. At the end of the day, did we win everything we wanted? No, we didn't. We had to make compromises on PVDs to ensure two things. One, that seasonal work had a guarantee to come to our part-time as workers first. And two, and that UPS could remain efficient and competitive during a specific five-week seasonal period in November and December. We also minimized the amount of outside hires they can hire, and they can only hire them in a five-week period. Previously, UPS used to hire these PVDs from October and use them to the middle of January. Now they have a five-week window where they can only use people off the street in that five-week period. We also needed to reconcile with the progression. We didn't get everything we needed or wanted there, but we fought hard. There was an appetite and a fight to reduce the progression from four years to two years. Unfortunately, we, we were not able to achieve those two things. But after all, after all was said and done, we got every single concession reversed from the previous agreement. And I'm certain we squeezed every single drop of, of, of juice out of the orange we could at UPS. Anyone who knows me knows my word, my reputation mean a whole hell of a lot to me. It's all we've got at the end of the day. I stand behind this tentative agreement with my whole heart. This is an incredible game-changing agreement, not just for the Teamsters, but the entire labor movement and the entire middle class. This has set the industry standard uh, for, this, for this industry, and this is the best agreement the Teamsters have ever negotiated at UPS. And I want you to read it for yourself. Compare it to years past. We took this company on, and all members will be better off for it. If you read misinformation or outright lies online about this agreement, do not let them distract you. Your efforts made this historic deal possible. This is an agreement that UPS never wanted to settle on. We forced them to pay our members more, to make huge non-economic uh, concessions go away and get proposals and get uh, agreements that are beneficial to our members. We may have made a few compromises, but I tell you straight, we got this deal without a single concession or give back from our members. We left nothing on the field. So now as we go out to review and discuss this contract, we need to remain transparent about the fight. We need to celebrate this fight and we need to evaluate together how much this agreement will improve the future for everyone. Earlier today, we went through these wins with representatives from nearly every local that represents UPS members. This two-person meeting of representatives meets in DC for several hours to review every change to the tentative deal. For more information on today's meeting, I want to welcome our greatest General Secretary Treasurer and our my partner in these negotiations who helped lead these negotiations, our General Secretary Treasurer, Fred Zuckerman. Thank you, Sean. Today at 1 p.m., nearly 400 representatives from our UPS local unions came together. The goal was to review and recommend this tentative agreement, which is an important step in our constitution to approve national contracts. Line by line, the National Committee and the General President went through every single change and improvement to the National Master Agreement. Reading aloud, we discussed where proposals originated, why the contract needed to change, 
and how the members will benefit as a result of these improvements. Local unions had the chance to ask questions and to get answers in real time. All local unions received in-depth presentations conducted by our legal team, as well as our Department of Strategic Initiatives. That provided all locals with a complete breakdown of the economic wins for you, our members at UPS. When we talk about a $30 billion deal, we dove into the details. We looked at how much UPS will be spending each year, and the union's economists analyzed UPS's finances and compared our gains to the, in 2023 to what was achieved in 2018 and earlier. There's no question about it, and there were no lingering questions in the room. This is the most expensive agreement UPS has ever been forced to pay to hardworking Teamsters. We fought hard and our members are going to win big. Please continue to take a look at this tentative agreement for yourself. In the coming days, even more information will be made available to you through your local union. Most details will continue to be shared on the app and social media. All UPS Teamsters will receive a ballot package in the mail featuring voting instructions and full contract highlights. After review in today's meeting, your local unions overwhelmingly endorse this new agreement. With that endorsement and recommendation, the tentative agreement will now go to you for ratification. Voting will officially open on August 3rd and voting will remain open until August 22nd. Members can vote one of three ways on the phone, using a mobile device, or by logging in online. As I said, you will receive detailed instructions at your home. Sean and I will touch on this again a little later on in the call. Voting will be conducted by a verified and reliable third party named Ballot Point, a company with a long history of conducting labor elections and balloting. Ratification results will be announced live on August 22nd. Thank you all. Stay tuned for more and back to you, Sean. Thanks, Fred. Let's welcome some additional speakers to the call, including principal officers from around the country and key members of our national committee. We invite them to share their thoughts on negotiation, on today's meetings, and on the new tentative agreement. First, it's an honor and privilege to welcome one of the hardest workers and toughest competitors out there, Vinnie Perone, our international trustee and president of Local 804 in New York. Vinny? Thank you, Sean and Fred. So I want to uh, extend a, a thank you to you guys. And it's an honor and a privilege to have been able to represent the members, not only of the international, but of my local 804. And in my 29 years as a UPS Teamster, my local has a reputation of fighting this company tooth and nail. I appreciate the uh, accolades on that. But I can tell you one thing, this contract is the best contract that our members have ever seen in 30 years that I know of and probably ever. Um, like you said, did we achieve every single thing? No, a few things couldn't be achieved. But if you look at the scope of the agreement from general wage increases to air conditioning, creating new jobs, part-time pay, job protections, important health and welfare and pension improvements, this is a home run in my opinion and in my locals opinion. This, this agreement is a great stepping stone for future agreements. And quite frankly, it's a great stepping stone for organizing new Teamsters, new members into the fold. So Sean, like you've said before, our job is to enhance, improve and protect benefits and jobs and members' livelihoods. And this contract, like I said, it's a home run regarding those issues. I think going forward, we have a lot to look forward to in the future. And I wanna thank you, Fred, the entire bargaining committee, which worked so hard to get this deal done, I look forward to battling this company, which is what we have to do and make them adhere to this agreement. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you, Vinny. I appreciate that. For additional insight, let's welcome another speaker. Let's say hello to Dennis Roberts, who's a president of Local 407 and also the chairman of the Central Region. Dennis? Good evening. Thank you, both Sean and Fred. I started at UPS as a part-time employee in 1986 before I started driving a package car and becoming the president of, my lo of Local 407. 
This is my fourth time being involved in national negotiations. And from the beginning, this negotiations was very impressive. Uh, Sean and Fred had the entire process mapped out from the beginning. Uh, during the contract campaign, everything was coordinated from issue-driven parking lot meetings, which coincided with efforts at the bargaining table, along with the practice picketing that we did, which helped out through the negotiation process. Uh, also, what was different about these negotiations is for the first time, uh, rank-and-file members participated in the process, giving valuable input giving their opinions and positions on issues which impacted uh, issues at the bargaining table. It was clear negotiations were driven by Sean and Fred in, the, in the, this set, uh, not the company, which is why we were able to get our negotiations done in record time. This process we followed uh, gave us the best contract in my nearly 37 years of being a, a Teamster and a UPSer, and that's why I'm recommending this contract. And I appreciate it, Sean and Fred, for everything that you guys did. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dennis. I appreciate your hard work. Our final speaker is also a member of our national committee and the general executive board. Please welcome Mark Davidson, international vice president for the Western region and president of Local 162 in Portland, Oregon. Mark? Good evening, Teamsters. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, everybody, for having me on the call. It's really, truly an honor and a privilege to serve on the National Negotiating Committee. You know, I got my start at UPS back in 1994 as a part-time preloader, and I served as a shop steward and a picket line captain during the 1997 strike. You know, I put myself through college working at UPS, and what attracted me was it was a union job, and I'm a trade unionist, come from a trade union background, and I needed benefits for my family. And what better way to do that than to become a Teamster? My family is better off for it. And I'm so proud now my daughter is a Teamster. You know, when we struck in 1997, UPS sought to undermine our health care benefits and our pensions. The fight was on in 1997 and we prevailed and came out on top. We did the same in this contract negotiations. This contract is not one dimensional. It's multi-dimensional. There's so many facets to this negotiations, and it's not about any one singular issue. It's about the entire, entire uh, picture that was painted by the negotiating committee that started with input from our members and ultimately attended an agreement that we believe all the members will be proud of. How did Sean and Fred do that? They First, they assembled a diverse team of uh, Teamsters from all backgrounds and experiences. And even at UPS and even in the Teamsters, you've got folks from major metropolitan areas, that may take a different view than some of the folks from rural areas. You have some longtime officers, you have some newer officers, you have some longtime rank and file, you have some newer rank and file. All of those voices were heard on the negotiating committee and it makes us stronger. And Sean and Fred leveraged that experience. Let's talk about healthcare and pensions. We talked about the 97 strike. I currently serve as a trustee on the Teamster Health and Welfare and Pension Funds covering more than 80,000 Teamsters in my region. Healthcare benefits in this contract are protected in this contract for another five years with UPS paying 100% of the premium. Go to a family barbecue and ask your family members and other folks at that barbecue if they're getting the same. Most workers can't say the same. This contract provides that. Our Teamster pensions are second to none. Language in this contract secures the current contributions future contributions, and ensures our members have real income and true security when you retire. Our members' pensions will continue to grow billions of dollars in contributions. Again, it's an honor and a privilege to serve on this committee and play a critical role in your livelihood, the future of this organization for the future of all members and their families well far and beyond when we're all retired and in a rocking chair. You know, I'll be in a rocking chair someday, it'll happen. Turn out to your union halls, get the whole story. Don't hear one thing and say you're moving on and you're fine and you're going to make a decision. Get to the halls, talk to your stewards at the gates, talk to your business agents on the shop floor, be involved, be excited about your future. Go Teamsters and back to you, Sean. Thank you, Mark. As Fred mentioned earlier in the call, voting packets and instructions are coming to all members. They'll begin hitting your mailboxes between Tuesday and Thursday of this week. Voting will be held electronically. Voting will be open from August 3rd to August 22nd. 
Most UPS local units will be conducting member meetings in person this week and this coming weekend. Please check in with your locals for all these details. Later this week, check back on the UPS Teamster app to use our new wage increase calculator and be on the lookout for progressive updates online and on the app about the benefits of this contract. Again, you can review the full tentative agreement and all wage rate examples on the app. Also, if you visit teamster.org slash UPS, you can review black line language for all supplements to the National Master Agreement. In addition to the full tentative agreement, all negotiated supplements are now online as well. Visit teamster.org slash UPS to find your supplement now. Finally, please remember that once this contract is ratified, the fight at UPS does not end. We'll begin a fierce contract enforcement campaign. This will not end until we return to the bargaining table to win even more in another five years. You will see fighting at your barns, fighting at the grievance panels, enforcing this contract every step of the way, because nothing gets done if we don't do it together. And a contract, no matter how good it means, nothing if we don't enforce it. Thank you all again for joining us. Please find a full version of this webinar on our YouTube and on the app. I cannot tell you how proud we are of this new tentative agreement. I urge you to read every single word and to take real pride in what we've all accomplished here collectively. We have changed the game at UPS and the labor movement and unionism throughout this whole country as a result of what we accomplished at the bargaining table. And we did it together. That's what a union is. That's who the Teamsters are. We fight for one another to improve the lives of all our members. No one gets left behind, especially under this contract. No one will. Thank you, and please have a great night.